Welcome to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Listecki. The latest news, important issues, and stories of Catholics living their faith in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. Here's co-host Bob Bennis. Broadcasting from the studios in the Cousins Center, the hub of the Archdiocese of Milwaukee, overlooking beautiful Lake Michigan. Welcome to the weekend, and that means another edition of Living Our Faith. Good morning, everyone. Let's welcome the host of Living Our Faith, Archbishop Jerome Listecki. Good morning, Your Excellency. Hi, Bob. How you doing? I am doing well. Good. We, Good. Just, we just finished, just this last Sunday, we celebrated Mother's Day. And, and what a wonderful opportunity for all of us, whether our mothers are living or not, because mine's not, uh, to be able to honor our mothers and to, to take that day, set it aside, and have that opportunity. Really, it's a, it is a great opportunity to do that, to recognize the um, almost the central role of mother, mm-hmm. um, but also to understand how it also ties in uh, to all of us, especially in the, the Catholic faith, where we have that central role for Mary, mm-hmm. you know, um, and how through her son, uh, she she embraces us as her as her children. And I can remember, you know, during those May crownings uh, as in, in grammar school, going over to a local florist. There mm-hmm. was a florist. There. Everybody in the neighborhood was auntie or uh, uncle. So I would go over to, to, to Auntie Elizabeth's, <laughs> who was the florist, you right. know, um, and we go, and sister needs, you know, uh, flowers for the Blessed Mother for the, mm-hmm. and of course, you know, we'd stop over and we'd get them. We probably were getting leftover funeral flowers, you know. But, but you got them at a discount. we got the flower, right. We got the flower <laughs> free, you know, free, okay. always for the, for the sisters, free, and we're able to mm-hmm. take them. And so she always would have fresh flowers in May. That was a, a wonderful a- aspect of kind of a tribute to Mary. And when you talk about the month of May, we set aside Mother's Day for our mothers, but we set aside the whole month to celebrate Mary. We do. We do. Um, uh, rightfully so. And it's uh, wonderful that, you know, the the secular society mm-hmm. will kind of embrace and, and grab hold of the uh, the wonderful role uh, of mother and to basically acknowledge that. And we're, we're losing sometimes. We're losing, you know, our ability to understand the significant role of mother and, and then therefore father mm-hmm. with, with, within the society. And that, that has to, to, I believe, go in with the attack on the family oh, in sure. our society. Oh, sure. We have two wonderful mothers with us today. Uh, we were, before we started this broadcast, we were we were talking and I, I was chuckling to the point that my cheeks are hurting from, from all the, the mother, the mothering parenting stories uh, that I was listening to. Let's welcome Jill Fisher and Katie Connors. Jill, we always ask before we get too far into the discussion to tell us a little bit about your background and if you would kick us off, please. Oh, sure. Well, I am currently the principal at St. Dominic Catholic School in Brookfield, Wisconsin. I am a lifelong resident of Brookfield and a cradle Catholic. So I have um, been in the Catholic environment, Catholic education my entire life from kindergarten all the way on up through postgraduate work at Marquette University. I am married to a wonderful man for nearly 20 years, and we have two children, two girls who are now 17 and 14. They are students at Pius the, the 11th High School. Mm-hmm. So when you look at your background, when you look at where where you're at as principal, which is St. Dominic's, your parishioner at another church in I Brookfield. I am. And those of us from <laughs> Brookfield, we know that there's a little bit of competition there. Your yes. parishioner is at St. John Vianney. That is correct. Crosstown <laughs> rivals. That is for sure. How about that? Wow. Well, yes. and you're an expert in mothering. That's what I was I told. Absolutely, Absolutely not. <laughs> I do not stake that claim at all. <laughs> you have two individuals come forward at 14 and 17. Wait a minute. Let, correct, let, let, let. correct. No, I'm reminded every day I am not perfect. <laughs> and we also have with us today Katie and George Connors. You probably won't hear George because George, I think, is about three months old, two months old. Okay. Katie, w- welcome to Living Our Faith. Thank you. Uh, tell us your faith background. Tell us your story, if you would, please. For our- I moved to Milwaukee to marry my husband. I told him on our first date that I wanted nine children, and I would love to be a stay-at-home mom. He did not run away. So, <laughs> <laughs> and Good sign. I know. Yeah, great it's sign, a good yes. sign. It's a good so, sign. We've been married for nine years and have six children. Wow. They are, yes, they are um, seven, six, five, three, two, and brand new. And we also live in Brookfield, Wisconsin, and my kids go to St. Mary's in Elm Grove. 
Six down and three to go. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can, I, I can testify to the fact that Katie is very helpful along with her husband in the presentation that we give in preparation for, for marriage. So mm-hmm. couples come in and uh, literally come to the Cousin Center or to other sites, Katie along with her husband. And uh, there are other couples, but I've seen Katie most recently along with her husband giving a presentation to uh, to the couples, helping them understand the importance of doing all that preparation before yeah. entering into marriage. Yes, the preparation for marriage is very important, and my husband and I are grateful to be there. Well, what did you do to prepare for being a mother? That's what I want to know. <laughs> you know, I always had it in my mind that I wanted to be a mother. I babysat, and I laughed when I had my own children because I'm like, wow, I really love my own children a lot more than the kids I babysat, and I loved those kids. So it's always been a dream of mine, and I have a very close relationship with my mom and my sister, and I think having those examples have really helped me become a better mother. Jill, how about you? What was a significant thing you think in preparation for for being mom? I completely echo what Katie is saying, that since little on, all I've ever wanted to do is be a mom. And I parlayed that into the most wonderful career ever, being a teacher. Sure. And so I, I look at spending my days with children as the most important work a, a human being can ever do, because they are the future of our faith. And so you have no more ready audience than than the children those teachers are amazing (laughs) very grateful for my kids teachers they are and in the importance of that uh that first year um in life there there had to be a tremendous feeling of uh am am i ready to be mom when that life basically is placed in in your hands now you're you're on number six so (laughs) you can say i I know i know but you know and and, and joe probably when that that 17 year old going back 17 years was placed in your your hand what what were the feelings say what what were the kind of the challenges i remember them very vividly because i still have them so when you behold your child you are you're first in awe that wow we we did this together mm-hmm. with god wow and it is a, an overwhelming sense of responsibility this this is now mine forever and ever and ever the only inclination i had quite naturally was to offer my child up say lord this child uh-huh. is yours help me raise this child to be who you have created it to be that's beautiful kind of takes the pressure off a little okay how about yourself you remember though you go back to that very first one i can remember also very vividly it was just kind of a shock of oh my goodness when you are we were just married and we had enjoyed that first year we're just to then have a brand new baby we were so excited because we were told originally that we would not have children and had started looking to adoption as soon as we'd gotten married and then we were blessed with the baby and just the joy and the happiness that our son Jack brought was so exciting but also the sheer terror of oh my gosh how how do I take a shower <laughs> you just don't know in like you get the baby in the car seat and then he poops and you're like oh my gosh now we have to start all over again <laughs> and it just takes forever to get anywhere and now I laugh when I just have the one I'm like oh my gosh that is so easy I just have one Whoop, there we go. But I look at my new moms and they're just terrified or they're just overwhelmed. And I totally understand. And they're like, but you have six. And I said, but I think the first one is the hardest because you just don't know. And it's so difficult. It's so unlike anything else. And you have to pray. Yeah. Without prayer, there's just no getting through the day. I remember overthinking every single maneuver Mm -hmm. to make sure that nothing happened to the child Mm -hmm. as we were in transport or while we're in a store. I I overthought it. Just all of the, well, what ifs? I needed to be prepared. Mm -hmm. So that was, I I remember thinking through the first trip to the mall and how I was going to get the stroller in and out of the car with the child in the car. And then what, once we got there, how do we, how do we navigate the escalators and the elevators and Oh, it was too much. It was exhausting. I ran into a mom at the zoo the other day, and she said, you have six kids. How do you do this? I got the one, and I can't even find him. And I said, well, <laughs> you know, they help each other. You know, that, sure. that, that is true. You know, it, it, it is true. You, the, the socialization, which is involved in the family, uh, is sometimes missed by individuals who say, well, I can only handle one. But 
yet the um, the, the relationship and dependency that, that that is created in brother to sisters uh, or brother to brother or sister to sister is so, uh, is so extremely important in, in the social development mm-hmm. of the individual. I guess the imagination had to be uh, phenomenal when you when you found out you were pregnant and as you got closer and closer and a bit. Your husbands immediately said, "Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? What is? What are we going to be entrusted? What are we? We, we going? How did how did spirituality come into play, Jill? In uh, during that period of time, you said, mm-hmm. you know, when you had that little mm-hmm. one, you turned turned her over to to, uh, to God. Mm-hmm. But but how did spirituality come into play as uh, as you were looking towards the birth of your child? The preparation, having conversations that with my with my husband that I didn't think we'd ever have in regard to school." Yes. And I guess I'm blessed because we were of like mind going into having a family. That always helps. Yes. And so when I think about challenges and how we need to bring the spirit into it, the, the spirit was always there. So I, that that's how I look at it, that this couldn't have even happened had the spirit not been involved from the beginning. And so the, the moment we brought our first daughter home, and in the car seat, we were talking about the ergonomics of car seats prior to our, our radio show, but um, bringing, the, bringing her in and placing her in the car seat in the middle of the living room, and we just looked at her like, what, do we, what, what happens now? <laughs> because the preparation was so intense. You just back away and wait till she's 21. <laughs> well, and then yeah, exactly. <laughs> Except we looked at her like, well, she can't play. Um, she's not talking. You know, she's sleeping all the time. What do we do? That was the spirit was in that as well. And Katie? One, with our fourth child, when we had our first ultrasound, they there were all these things that looked like they were wrong with her. Mm. And I went on a day Chantel silent retreat, and Bishop Hine was there. And I told him, and I was all upset. I said, you know, they, they don't know what's wrong with the baby. And so he just said, it's okay, calm down, and I'll pray over you. And he prayed over me, and it was just such a relief. And I said, okay, Lord, if... There are all these things wrong with her. We are going to love her and take care of her. Don't know how we're going to do that with all these other kids, but it's going to work out. And she ended up being perfectly healthy and is just a sweet child. And I remember that vividly, just t- taking her and giving her to God in the womb, saying, okay, Lord, whatever happens, I trust you. You're only going to give me as much as I can handle. And mm-hmm. I really can't handle that much. So I know I need to trust <laughs> in you because clearly you've entrusted a lot to me. So it's all on you. You have to help me here. This is the month of Mary, and we are celebrating motherhood. We have with us in the studio today Jill Fisher and Katie Connors. We're going to take a break for a message, and then you'll hear the news from our friends over at the Catholic Herald. You're listening to Living Our Faith here on Relevant Radio for Southeast Wisconsin. Put more heart in your hands. These are words St. Camillus used to encourage his followers when caring for the sick. And today, these words are at the essence of care provided by employees at St. Camilla's campus in Wauwatosa. St. Camilla's nursing administrator, Sandra Dugan, shares a recent More Heart in Your Hands moment. An 84-year-old resident who came to us after a massive stroke that left her left side completely paralyzed. Now, five months post-stroke care with our excellent rehab department, she is able to use a walker. She does all of her own activities of daily living with minimal assist, and her memory is great. She's now going to spend her winter in Florida with her niece. The best part is to work with someone at their time of health crisis and then see them return to living a life to their fullest again. For more information regarding St. Camilla's rehabilitation, go to relevantradio.com keyword rehab. Good morning. I'm Grace David with highlights from this week's Catholic Herald and catholicherald.org. For the seventh consecutive year, Good Shepherd Parish in Menominee Falls will hold its 24-hour Word Without End, beginning Friday at 4 p.m. and running through Saturday at 4 p.m. Scripture will be read continuously during that time. Plans are underway to stream it on the parish website at www.mygoodshepherd.org. That's www.mygoodshepherd.org. May being the month of the Blessed Mother, Father Paul Hartman uses his Herald of Hope column to reflect on the Memorari, a prayer he calls compelling in its simplicity. For a better understanding of what Catholics believe about Mary and why we believe, read Father Hartman's column in the Catholic Herald and at catholicherald.org. 
Pope Francis reiterated his view that the Catholic Church is not a fancy medical clinic for the rich, but a field hospital that, often literally, provides the only medical care some people will ever receive. Health is not a consumer good, but a universal right, so access to health services cannot be a privilege, the Pope said May 7th during a meeting with the medical group Doctors with Africa. Well, you may see a lot of moving trucks crisscrossing the archdiocese next month, and the reason is found on page 4 of this week's Catholic Herald. The entire page lists appointments for priests and one layperson, and the parishes and Catholic institutions they'll be serving. Receive regular updates of Catholic news and information at catholicherald.org. For the Catholic Herald and catholicherald.org, this is Grace David wishing you a happy Pentecost. Thank you for listening. We now return you to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Lestecki. Welcome back to Living Our Faith. We're talking with Jill Fisher and Katie Connors, and what you won't hear is the the prayer that Katie just told us, Hail Mary, full of grace, help us find a parking place. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it's Mama Mary, right, isn't we it? We call Mary Mama Mary. Mama and, Mary. Yes, the kids know Mama Mary very well. <laughs> she helps us all day long. Mama Mary, help us find our shoes. Mama Mary, thank you for our day. <laughs> Mama Mary, please take this to Jesus for us. We have a very close relationship with Mary in our house. Yeah, and it's it's important if she can find you that parking oh, space. Yes. That is really good. Yes, she <laughs> is very great at parking spots. We went to the zoo in our new 15-passenger van, and I don't know if you've been to the zoo recently, but the parking spots are very difficult to find and very hard to park in. And she found us the perfect one on the end that I could slide that van right into and didn't hit anybody, so it was fantastic. <laughs> Jill, being a principal, how, yes. how does being a mother and having raised um, uh, two da- uh, two wonderful daughters how how does that help you as a principal when you have to relate to basically parents especially the the moms uh, when it comes to uh, their their children in the school it helps because you i emphasize the fact that we work as a team that it's a collaborative approach to raising children and that neither one of us have all the answers and um, and that's the blessing of being in a Catholic school is that we can call upon our intercessors to assist us in this overwhelming task. So talking to parents, um, talking to mothers especially, I do call upon the Blessed Virgin to to guide us and lead us in caring for the children. And then by extension, talking to the children about that as well. When they've fallen down or they can't find something or they're at wit's end on a particular day, just to say, you know what? We have wonderful people we can talk to. We can talk to Mary. We can talk to Jesus. And when we're feeling all alone, we're actually never, ever alone. Just talk to them. Pray to them. And so there's there's peace in that. And so any contentious situation that might fall upon my shoulders can easily be remedied by whispering off a little prayer, either together or just me all by myself. (laughs) (laughs) Now, it's Mother's Day, which just uh, just recently. How... How do the two homes, how do your homes celebrate, you know, Mother's Day? I mean, are you are you like queen for a day? Do they Never. Kind of, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick, Jill. That Never was quick. Never am I queen for a day. <laughs> yeah, well, queen for a year. Yeah. That's what it is. Oh, yeah. Ooh, not even that, unfortunately. How, no. how do the, fam- the, the family celebrate uh, Mother's Day? Do, do the kids do something special for you, or uh, does dad do something special for you? I I still have very young kids who their teachers are wonderful and they make the cutest projects. They take pictures, they do handprints. So I get the most wonderful presents on Mother's Day from the kids and I have a whole box full now. And I am very lucky. My husband lets me decide what I'd like to do on Mother's Day. And I do a 5K run with my girlfriends. It's called Run Like a Mother. And (laughs) the dads all stand on the sidelines with the kids and they make signs and they cheer us on. And then at the end, we get mimosas and roses and it's just a wonderful time to take a moment to breathe for myself and um, then we also spend time with my husband's mother Uh and we do a special dinner with her so that we um, but I always make him pick out the present for her because I said that's your mom so you need to be involved in that. Is that a little dangerous to have the (laughs) the husband pick out a mom? (laughs) You know but I think it's special because I said I pick out stuff for my mom and you need to remember that your mom is very important. She's so helpful for us in our kids' lives that it's fun to see what his ideas of 
what is special for his mom. <laughs> okay, you're on, Joe. Yeah, I'm on now. <laughs> you're on. Yes. Now, remember, your your daughters are going to be listening. I know. So. <laughs> they, this, they will. I, I, I Like Katie, when my girls were in elementary school, yes, I received the most beautiful homemade gifts from, from them, and they reside in our curio cabinet. So there they sit. And pretty much up until maybe about four years ago when the girls could earn an allowance to purchase their own gifts, my husband did take them shopping, and I would receive everything from a coffee mug to a reflective candle holder <laughs> because he just allowed them to choose what they thought mommy would like on Mother's Day. Um, but our day always began with, with 9 o'clock mass, as it still does, and I always received two roses from the Respect Life committees that would sell roses on, on Mother's Day. Um, so I always looked forward to that in addition to their, their little token keepsakes. And the remainder of the day would be spent with our moms. And so so both, we're we're blessed that our families are all in Milwaukee. Well, it so is a bl- it's a blessing. It is. Yes, it is. It is. So we were able. To, we would be at brunch with one mom and then dinner with the other mom, and it was all about the moms on Mother's Day. So, um, and the sister in laws, and everyone was to, everyone's together between the two families. We we travel back and forth. Now, so. Bob, I, I know you're not a mother, uh, but <laughs> thank I, you. I know I know you have one. I do, and you also have a wonderful wife. How? Uh, what What do you do special on that day? What my mother's passed away, so. From that perspective, it's always pleasant memories of when I was growing up. And and some of the things that you've highlighted here today, we did as kids. Um, But today, uh, the pattern for us is to bring the kids together. We go out to Holy Hill. We go to Mass at Holy Hill. Wonderful. And then where do we go? We go to Fox and Hounds <laughs> for a family brunch. That was a plug. Just let <laughs> let Fox and Hounds know that was a plug. A, a free plug for yeah, Fox right. and Hounds. That's right. So that's 10% off for Bob and his family. <laughs> oh, I was going to go for a whole lot more than that. <laughs> uh, so that that has been a tradition for, for a longstanding period. And then part of that is my mother-in-law, who is now 84, uh, she also joins us for that. Oh, beautiful. So beautiful. Not only do I get the, 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 the opportunity to spend that time, quality time with my wife and the kids, but also my mother-in-law. And I say that with a genuine smile on my face. <laughs> my mom has since passed away, too. And, uh, you know, my sister and I, uh, we were great advocates of giving my mother jewelry, mm. the worst jewelry <laughs> imaginable. You know, I mean, it, that God-awful costume-type jewelry, which the more gaudy, the more the better it looks for kids. But you, the, you thought it was great. Oh, we of did. Course. We did. We did. And, of course, my mother would dutifully wear it for that day. And then it seemingly it disappeared, you know, for it was just gone. So mm-hmm. you, uh, but of course, she had boxes of uh, of that. But the the more gaudy, the the better. Just over the top when it basically comes to uh, to mom. You know, just a wonderful aspect. One of the aspects of uh, of being a mom is the ability to make, especially if there's more than one child. My sister claims that I'm an only child. <laughs> so it's, especially if there's more than one child in the in the family, how do you make them? all feel special? How do you make them feel that there isn't a competition? I like you better than us. And, you know, there are all sorts of um, studies now saying, oh, no, a mother or a father always likes one child more than the other. I, I cannot imagine any mother, you know, saying, oh, yes, I prefer you over <laughs> this person. How do you, how, what kind of gift is given to you to be able to do that? And how do you make uh, uh, each, each of the children feel special? I have it easier than Katie. I have two, um, and if and, and when they are listening to this, they'll say, "Well, see, Mom, Sarah's the favorite because you talked about her more than you talked about me." And and I get that all the time. Where oh, you love this one better, and there's nothing worse. That's a dagger to the heart for for sure. But um, making concerted effort to spend time with each apart, as well as together. Um, the my girls were always called my shadows because we traveled. As a trio, everywhere, um, and I'm the fish, and they're the guppies. Is the other one that would would be <laughs> we'd be lapped on us. And um, in that that mix, each child brings their own uniqueness to the table. So it's it's easy to play the the mom role when they are different, and as well as in their similarities. 
And for me, I like to try and give each child their own opportunity to do things with me, like go to the grocery store. It's very oh, exciting cool. Cool. just to take one child by themselves. Yeah. And um, my husband and I also try and take the kids out. It's my son's birthday on Thursday, our oldest. And so he's getting a gift certificate to Red Robin with also a Red gift certificate. Robin. Yes. <laughs> Is that another plug? Off yeah. Red Robin for Katie also. <laughs> and he's also in... <laughs> Included is a babysitter for his brothers and sisters, so he will get a special date night with mom and dad as one of his main birthday presents. And we try and do that with all of our children just so that they can get a little bit of time so we can hear what they want to do, what they're excited about, because they're changing so fast, and it does get kind of overwhelming at the dinner table when everyone's trying to talk over everyone. But we also give everybody the opportunity at dinner. Every night, we sit down as a family, and they tell us what they did that day. And our three-year-old likes to tell us what she did three weeks ago every night at the dinner table. <laughs> what did you do today? She doesn't quite get that today thing. But um, so just trying to talk to them and focus on them. And we pray together at night and getting letting them talk and have an opportunity to be part of the family, I think, really is helpful. I was going to mention, too, it's the bedtime. So after we say our nighttime prayers, to go individually to tuck in. That's when the real one-on-one sure. starts to happen. And sometimes it goes longer with one than the other because they're unloading so yeah. that they can yeah. put their head to rest. Yeah. So critically important, that role of, uh, of mother. And, and you could uh, hear it in both uh, Jill and Katie, or, um, the whole sense of uh, the development of that spiritual life, which starts right from mom, kind of directing them to, um, uh, to an understanding and dependency on God, uh, to bringing uh, to God a personal relationship, to bring in inviting um, God, and in this case, even the Blessed Mother, into a personal relationship to everything that's, that, uh, that they do. And, and given our commitment to the faith and our understanding the role that Mary has, we get grounded, we get, we get peace, we get support there, asking her to intercede for us. We're going to take another break. We'd hate to, hate, we really hate to see this half hour end. It's been so enjoyable. Uh, but we, uh, we need to take our final break. You're listening to Living Our Faith right here on Relevant Radio. Many of us at some point in our lives must face a decision regarding how we can best be cared for when rehabilitation is necessary following surgery or medical crisis. Hear from St. Camillus Nursing Administrator Sandra Dugan regarding the exceptional rehabilitation program at St. Camillus. What makes St. Camillus Rehab unique and special as it compares to our competitors is that we are the only continuum of care campus in the area that offers skilled nursing, home health, and outpatient services. You will get consistent staff throughout your rehab journey, and there's excellent communication throughout the continuum in order to promote maximum outcomes. They also can continue with the home care therapists that they have already come to know and trust in their own home when they're discharged from our facility. For more information regarding St. Camillus Rehabilitation, go to relevantradio.com keyword rehab. That's keyword rehab. Welcome back. We'd like to remind you that this show will air again on Saturday morning at 9.30 and then again on Sunday morning at 9.30. We've enjoyed celebrating motherhood and the month of Mary with two wonderful mothers, Jill Fisher and Katie Connors. Thank you both. We always like to end the show with a prayer. Your Excellency? Sure. You know, there's uh, there's no such thing as a typical mom. Every mom brings the uniqueness of God's yes, special do. mark of um, in their life uh, to, the, to the family. Uh, but there are certain experiences which are shared by all mothers, the closeness and love uh, for their children, uh, the ability to celebrate uh, their lives and to see literally that as a gift that God has given to them. Um, so as we close our, our show, we remember in a particular way those those mothers who have had to undergo uh, the loss of a child mm, yes. um, and so hard and so devastating uh, uh, for them personally. Um, and I know in, in a number of situations as a priest that I've had to deal with uh, the loss of, uh, of basically a child and how that mother and, and the couple never let go of that. That, mm-hmm. that child is a part of their family basically forever, and they understand how God has gifted them. So we're going to place and entrust those moms and the lives in Thanksgiving for the lives that they, they bore and they had to return to God way, way too early. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother, Mother of God, God, pray, pray for, for us sinners, sinners now and at the hour 
hour of our, of our death. death. Amen. Amen. Mary, Mother of Mercy, pray, pray for, for us. us. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thanks for joining us today. Have a wonderful weekend, and let's all be transformed by the Spirit. This has been Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Listecki and co-host Bob Bennis. Join us again next week for the latest news, important issues, and stories of Catholics living their faith in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. 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 Milwaukee.